Hello boys and girls. In this video we are looking at an implementation of a scalar version, so a one-dimensional version of the reverse accumulation algorithm um, that in some form also lies at the heart of Autograd, which is the PyTorch library for differentiation. So basically we are going to um, look at the implementation of the backprop algorithm which if you disregard all computational aspects is basically just a uh, Jacobian or the derivative computation algorithm, but it is um, the very efficient implementation that makes these uh, machine learning tools possible. In the TinyGrad, this is this George Hotz uh, library, uh, README, you see an, an, an example of, uh, of just PyTorch, right? So Impl uh, import torch, then some two tensors are defined. You know, this is just a unity matrix and this is a mother tensor. And then there is some algebraic operations of these two. And then you call this um, backwards uh, call. And what then happens is, and you know, if you're just looking at that from um, uh, a pure uh, math uh, perspective, then you know this should give you a pause uh, because here the derivative of z which is essentially corresponding to a function of x and y where x and y are some values uh, of some variables x and, x and y um, the the derivative or the value of the derivative of z with respect to x ends up in this x variable right so this is from uh, from an inter interface um, point of view, interesting, right? That the derivative of Z that was um, composed of these X and Ys ends up in in the X and Y variables themselves. And this is exactly this backpropagation thing that happens there. You're computing the derivatives in a manner where it essentially propagates back through a graph um, to these leaves and the graph is basically the expression of whatever uh, mathematical uh, function or construction you have here and the derivative of the top level of this of this uh, tree uh, of this um, dark you know um, uh, directed acyclic graph is pushed down to the uh, to the leaves here um, and we are going to implement a, f a forwards um, differentiation of um, polynom for polynomials, so a one-dimensional polynomial of an, you know, whatever number of variables you want. Um, we're going to implement uh, the the normal, so to speak, the, the naive uh, approach of computing the derivative, but then also the um, uh, this. Um, reverse accumulation algorithm. This is what this video is about. Uh, and we are going to see the, we get the same results um, that we also get with Py, PyTorch with both of these. And at the end of the video, I'm also using the reverse accumulation for a gradient descent um, minimum finding just for demonstration's sake. Okay, so um, the um, function that I will keep using throughout this video is this uh, simple polynomial of two variables, right? So this is the polynomial P of X and Y. It takes this form, um, the uh, value I call also set, and I'm interested in, I will evaluate this uh, function as well as the derivative of this function at the values X equals two and uh, Y equals three. So, um, just so you get an impression, this is basically um, this paraboloid function. Uh, clearly, if you plug in uh, x and y zero, then you get zero. So, um, you know, this is the top view uh, at zero, there's a zero. Um, but this is actually um, not the minimum of the function. Um, if we scroll down here on Wolfram Alpha, then we see what will be important. The derivative of this uh, polynomial with respect to y is this thing, um, which means at the value x equals 2, y equals 3, the value will be 8. 
and with respect to x is this expression and so the value will be 9 there and for you know being sure that we've implemented everything correctly in the gradient descent algorithm we will compute the minimum and the ground truth solution as we see here is minus 3 over uh, 4 over 3 so we keep this in mind um, you can also do this in pen and paper we're going to uh, implement the algorithm which uh, computes this um, also Okay, and uh, you know, there's the back propagation uh, Wikipedia page, and the, uh, there's also an automatic differentiation uh, Wikipedia page. There's some C and some version of Python implementations, um, although in this video will be a little bit more extensive than the Wikipedia article. What I like, however, is here the, uh, there's a graph of a simple uh, function expression, expression really. I mean, this is very short, this is just this. Uh, um, four letters but uh, you see that you know given an expression and you can you know you can um, imagine how this is bigger we are going to uh, talk about polynomials so we're also going, going to have a plus expression and the multiplication exp expression and you can um, uh, chain pluses and multiplications together with an you know an arbitrary number of variables and then you ca get this tree which you know has some nodes and you can make it as big as you want um, if we have binary operations, then we will have some nodes where one thing comes in and two goes out. And this is similar to here, this G. Um, and in this case, this is very short, but um, uh, what, what will happen is that we implement something where some information propagates down th there. And I'm also going to show you like a, a dummy class um, where we see how this forward and backward propagation um, is implemented. And in principle, the algorithm, uh, backpropagation algorithm, is about computing the deri derivative of of f, um, which is the you know the, the the root of this tree, with respect to the leaves uh, at the bottom here, l left and right, and uh, to compute the derivative, you have to you know apply a chain rule, uh, product rule, whatnot, and it's about like um, keeping track of the right expressions that are going to get pushed down and eventually are, are found here then in these leaves here it's called l and r in this um in this example it was called x and y but this is sort of the idea you have this expression you can think of z as the, the top of this tree and then the algorithm uh this backwards call pushes information down and it, it ends up here in this x and y okay so um so uh for starters that this is the script that you also find um in the description uh, it's all as usual it, in my videos it's just uh, some simple python uh this is the, the um, function that we are going to work with like literally this this function here um p of um, three variables this d will be set to two to get this um, expression that we just saw in word from alpha um, we're going to implement classes that then interpret correctly this infix operation for plus and multiplication. And this is a, just a function that computes this expression and returns this thing. So we're going to implement classes that can be passed there, which basically are wrappers for numerical values, and such that this function returns another um, class expression. And we're going to use this p exactly this p with three different um, implementations and so um, i will scroll down now at the bottom of this script there is a bunch of functions uh, like this this one this one this one and this one and the video will consist of me explaining all these four uh, functions the first one is the uh, pytorch example where i basically use literally the pytorch library and 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 a few wrappers and to get our sort of ground truth, we will see what the PyTorch thing does. So um, if I scroll up to this torch example, um, uh, here. So what I have here is some function, and if I call it, then it does some things, and then it prints something, you already see it's boiled down here. Uh, if I um, run the IDE, uh, you see this, this uh, send send uh, time thingy symbol and then it evaluates it it takes five seconds because um, importing this stupid pytorch library takes long um, but um, so what we have here is 
I have here this is this is this near enough where I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, what we have here is this. Uh, okay, sorry. What we have here is this p. This is the function that we saw just above, and um, I uh, pass to it dx and and y, uh, and these are not just numbers but are this. Um, uh, custom classes so that the multiplication and, and addition is interpreted. I'll show you the implementation of these classes in a second. And uh, we are, um, for this example, interpreting just scalar uh, numbers, right? Th these are going to be floats, um, as one by one matrices. So while the PyTorch library is obviously um, working with uh, quotes and quotes tensors, like TensorFlow, right? It's just some certain da data types of numbers. Um, because in this video we are only going to look at the one-dimensional or scalar polynomials, I cast the scalar to a PyTorch object, which is basically just a one times one matrix, you can think of it like that. And um, so to use this polynomial, I need to wrap this, um, this tensor or PyTorch tensors into some other class so that I can just use the implementation that you just saw for this P. Um, I'm going to show you this in a second, but in 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 essence, this um, x, y, and d are this wrapped PyTorch one by one tensors, right? I compute the expression set um, using my polynomial um, with with these uh, variables. You know, I'm talking of variables and values, and you shouldn't confuse them in the video. Um, if I say variables, then I mean an instance of this um, wrapped expression where I can uh, do basically do an abstract addition and multiplication. And if I have two expressions and I do an addition, then I will get a return value, which is another expression. But also these variables also carry a value, which is literally uh, in the end, some floating point value. So this set is this expression um, on which in, in internally has um, can call this this uh, 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 tensor operation from PyTorch and that's what I do here. Here basically happens the back propagation, uh, meaning all the derivatives are computed and they end then up in the uh, variables that I have defined here. And then if I print uh, Z as well as these derivatives, which, which according to PyTorch are now part of this XYID, then I get these results and these are exactly the one that I've um, motivated uh, with the Wolfram Alpha thing, right? So this is our ground truth thing. Um, PyTorch uh, does these things its own way, but in the end it uses this autograd um, uh, library and the scalar part of it we, we will look into the implementation of this in this video. Okay, so just to complete this, uh, this expression torch is just this simple wrapper that I have here. Um, so as you see, it is th this literally does nothing except um, it, it uh, turns this plus into this underline add underline, uh, which then in, um, in Python also means I can uh, do this infix notation for this class. And likewise, for the multiplication of tensors, I have this mult. Okay, so this is just this was just a wrapper for the tensor, and if I want to apply uh, the poly polynomial function uh, p again, p was just this function here. If I want to apply literally this function, then I have to cast to I have to wrap and end wrap basically this tensor. Okay, so uh, so. Um, as you can see, uh, something happens here with this expression. Um, as I am motivated, things are pushed down into the variables. Um, just to explain um, how uh, the um, back and forth propagation through this sort of chained expression works, um, I will spend uh, five minutes or so on explaining a particular like custom class that I made uh, that I just made so that we can understand what, what happens here with this forwards and backwards. We have a certain layer class which is just an object you know it has um, these four functions. The layer is basically an, an, a class which uh, contains these four members it has a name it has some data um, this is 
basically just a numerical value or whatever you want that it can hold as a like you know it's some it's ra it, the layer wraps this data and when we um compute stuff we were going to uh, use this data um, member as a record for what happened you know what what, what data was seen during the evaluation uh, the layer has a function also and the layer uh, can know of another layer uh, which is going to be the previous layer right so this is a layer class i'm going to come to these members in a second and then we also have a stack uh, which is nothing but um, a chain of in this case five layers right i give a, a pass I, I, upon defining the stack i define five layers they ha all have all their names you know not very creatively layer zero to layer four um, apart from the base layer, apart from the lowest layer, uh, they all uh, get some function, which is just some larger and larger number being added to whatever is the input of the function. And the previous layer is, um, as you might expect, literally just a previous layer. So the uh, layer three has name uh, has name uh, three layer three, <laughs> and there's some function, and it knows of layer two. Okay, so the, obviously the this is like then a linear sequence, which makes it a little bit more simpler than the uh, generic polynomial expressions with plus and minus, right? Like plus and minus, you can think of this, this uh, tree being um, defined. Here is a linear sequence of layers and the abstraction, uh, both of these uh, uh, extractions, of course, in PyTorch uh, end up um, corresponding somehow to a neural network, right? You can think of this, this is a neural network um, simplifi simplified definition uh, where you have these layers of the neural network and um, accordingly there, this function has a forward call and what happens here is it takes the data of the, the bottom layer, this is basically the input to the neural network if you want and then I call in sequence uh, all the uh, four uh, layers that follow and each um, function takes the input that was uh, returned from the previous layer, right? In this way, the, um, the some, some data value that was set is propagated through this, to, through this stack or through this network. And because the function is always adding some stuff, what will happen is that some numbers are added uh, everywhere. The, the whole point of this class is, it's just for explanation purpose, that I have all these logs here at which we will see the, the flow uh, of the evaluation. Right, okay, then we have a function to set the uh, bottom value, the, set the input basically. Um, and then what we also have is this push down signal. And the point of this is to demonstrate what it means to um, push down stuff uh, um, down the layer. and. Uh, this is a recursive function, which basically, in the sense that uh, is a pushdown, it calls the uh, pushdown signal of um, layer four, and in the layer, there's also a pushdown signal function implemented, namely this here. It takes a signal, and uh, then what it does is it looks, hey, do you have a previous layer? Yes, if you have a previous layer, then take the previous layer and push down a new signal, right? And the new signal, as you can see here, is just a signal that I got plus some extra information. In this case, for demonstration purposes, I just take the, whatever data is stored on the layer. And so the fourth uh, layer gets past the signal, it adds something to the signal and it gives it down to the layer three, the layer three does add some stuff, gives it down to the layer uh, two and so on and so forth. And in this way, as opposed to the forward pass, this push down um, propagates the signal down, and and uh, both in both directions, um, this sort of logic can be seen then in these two implementations of the reverse accumulation that we will um, look at. The reverse accumulation, in fact, goes in both directions. Like it, it pushes a value forward, and then it pushes the derivative uh, backward. You know, this is an evaluation step where you set all the values, and then you actually push the derivatives downward. And the other implementation that I do, I also do a forward implementation in this video, it just in a sense computes both uh, value and derivative in one direction. You will see that in a second. Um, okay, yeah, the evaluation function, of course, just evaluates whatever function is there. And that's pretty much it. So I scroll down and I comment out the torch example that I just uh, shown you. 
and I run this stack example, it's immediately done. Um, the stack example is as follows. Okay, I define an input free. I define an input free. Um, I define a layer. I set the input layer. So this is what's happening here. So I set up the uh, the stack. I set the value free into the stack. We are here. Then I call the forward uh, pass of the value. Right there are these these functions. You can see them here. And you can f you can think about what happens. Well, I get the free. The x uh, is added to the number forty. So this becomes 43, you can see it here. Um, and then in, in the forward function uh, pass here, the data uh, free is added here, you get a 43, then it's added to the next thing. And it, I've designed it in a way that that becomes then four, uh, five, four, three, and then so on and so forth. And you see what happens here, right? This is the forward pass through this stack. Um, and then in this demo, I also do this push down of signal foo after the forward pass is uh, is done uh, here. Sorry if I scroll too much here in this video, but you will have to will have to bear with, bear with me here. The evaluation function that I just called, you know, it calls whatever function you have, but in the, it saves a record to the to the data um, entry, and then if I do the push down as you see here, then the signal you know, foo is augmented with uh, the data that you have previously computed in the forward pass, so. As you can see then down here in this evaluation, um, foo becomes foo and then the number saved in the last layer, like in layer four. Um, four. Uh, and that is pushed down to layer three and the layer three adds then this number and so on and so forth. And so this signal becomes bigger and bigger uh, and it becomes a contribution from all these evaluations. And obviously the, the analogy that we will see later is that also for the neural network or the autograd or my scalar grad or however you want to call it um, we're going to define the polynomial we're going to set values in the variables which are the fundamental building blocks with which which the com uh, polynomial is computed then we will do a forward pass which basically means uh, evaluating everything in a forward uh, fashion right we're going to compute the value and 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 all these kind of things for for the set um, of uh, based on these values that come in, right? So for x, we have the the, val the variable x has the value two, the variable y has the value three, and, and d will be two. We do the forward pass, then z will have will be an expression that uh, carries the value twenty three for this function, and then uh, for all intermediate um, expressions that are you know part of this set, some values will be set, and then we will do uh, the the back propagation, where in a tricky way it, it goes back through the whole uh, function uh, expression graph, the polynomial ex expression graph, and the only thing that has is to be done there is then think about hey, what are the contributions that I have to um, that I have to add at all stages, so that uh, when I look at the bottom um, variables, so for example for x I want it to hold the value. Uh, the derivative of z with respect to x at some certain um, position. We just have to uh, define the pushdown function in a way that it it, it um, you know gives along augments the signal that it got from the from the higher uh, place. In uh, you know we have to carry this some certain derivatives or certain multiplication expressions from left and right and so on in the correct way. So that what we end up with in the bottom is going to be the this gradients. Um, okay, uh, so you see how that works. This was just the example with the stack. And now um, that being done, we will look at first before we go to the actual uh, reverse accumulation um, implementation, we're going to look at the simpler forward accumulation, which is basically how you would do it more or less on, like on pen and paper in a sense. Okay, so I will comment out the stack example um, and run this comparison. So again, I will run the torch example and these two comparisons once. 
Uh, and what we will see in the end is that the torch example, we get these values that I just described, right? So 23, uh, 9, and, and 8. And then the, um, the forward example has the same result and the reverse accumulation example will also have exactly the same result. So you, you already see, and they're they are all using the same P, they're using the same the small Python function P. They are just implementing different classes to make this work. So you see it already, you're already convinced that it will work. You're just now interested in looking at the code. Okay, I make some space here because we will not need the output much. So, the, okay. So, uh, the first thing that, uh, I, that we define here, and this is actually used for both implementations, forward and backwards, is just, this is just a pair. It's just a, a struct which holds uh, two values, well and d well. You can think of this as the value. For example, the x will have the value uh, two. This will be the value, and d well is just the memory, uh, the the member that that stores whatever um, derivative value, numerical der derivative value you write to it, and then it has get the functions. Okay, uh, that's it. Very easy. Um, this this pair will be used as um, container in both of the expressions okay so the classes the rest of the video is basically just defining six classes and the classes all represent expressions right so a variable is an expression which can hold a value and then we have um, an addition expression a plus and a multiplication expression and uh, uh, chaining together these expressions gives us some polynomial and which represents some functions of which we can then take the derivative of. Okay, um, for this class I implement a base class and the other ones will be a uh, derived class from, from this base class. It has uh, this um, addition operation, right, so to interpret this the infix notation for the uh, polynomial and it returns instances, when I call this, it returns instances of the classes that we will just implement uh, here in a second. Um, so that's easy. Uh, then we also have um, here, this says that for um, both, also for any class that is derived from that, for any child from this parent class, we need to implement um, the value and devalue setting, right? Otherwise this will break at runtime. Uh, and then I, for convenience, I also have a getter for the value which just returns the first component um, from from whatever is constructed in the in the value d value pair. Okay, the first um, uh, class that is derived from this expression base is the variable expression. Right, this will be our x and y and d. the The variable expression has a value. For example, the the variable expression x will carry the value two. Um, upon in initialization um, and here I implement uh, setting the value um, and um, computing the derivative and this is a function which uh, takes another variable right another expression as an input and um, so to do that uh, firstly I um, Um, I read out, um, you know, the, I read out the first entry of the pair. Uh, basically, what I'm doing here is I create a pair. I take the value of the, uh, of this uh, of the present uh, variable, and um, so this this R will be a pair where the first entry is the value that it has. So uh, <laughs> maybe co more complicated said than done. This is just the return, just the value of whatever is, is there, whatever is already set. Um, and for computing the d val, right, uh, the the value of the derivative of this variable, um, we only allow it to be two things, either zero or one. If the the variable um, with respect you take the derivative of. So for example, if um, 
if if the, the the instance the self is the variable x and we take the derivative with respect to, with respect to x then uh, you know dx dx is one the derivative of variables with itself is just one so uh, we want to return one and this is impl implemented here with the Kronecker delta uh, if that what is passed is the variable itself is the ver if the variable is passed to itself then this will be true the integer cast will be one and so the derivative value will be set to one right if on the other hand the variable that is passed to this uh, this variable to the self is some other variable for example the derivative of x with respect to y where x and y are different variables then uh, you have zero derivative there's no dependency and so this will be false the integer cast will be zero and the value will be zero okay i hope this is clear enough um, this is all that the, the variable does. The value is set upon initialization and we can uh, re get the value on the derivative given another variable. Okay. Um, the next class is the plus expression. Again, this is a, an expression like in a polynomial. The plus expression, you know, a, t a plus b has a left side and a right, uh, uh, left hand side and a right hand side. The left hand side would be a plus B, B would be on the right hand side. So this is a class uh, which represents an expression which holds two other expressions, right? This is an expression which is composed of two expressions and um, by its own nature, it's the plus. It represents the plus of these expressions. So there's a left and right. Um, to compute the derivative and the value, well, um, the, the value is just the value of these two expressions added together here. Yeah? Right, so this the value of um, this plus expression is just, just the sum of the values of sub expressions, and the um, the uh, derivative, the value of the derivative of this expression is just the sum of the, the values of the derivative of the sub expression because the derivative is linear, right? So if you take the derivative of a plus b plus b, then it will be the derivative of the left side plus the derivative of the right side. Okay. Um, and uh, the multiplication works in the same fashion. The, the class is, is the same as plus, um, except the the value is the product, and the uh, the value of the derivative is exactly given by the product rule. You know, which you are supposed to know. And I can I can write it down here. Uh, a times b derivative equals. Um, let let me write it like this. A times b plus a times b derivative so i hope you remember that from calculus okay so this is basically what's implemented here um and i suppose um in this expression i have it yeah it doesn't matter you know plus is commutative so i can also write it like this it doesn't matter okay okay so um this is the implementation you of the the forward computation right if you call uh, the derivative of some expression then it will call the derivative computation the, the derivative computation of the other expressions and this will like recursively go down until you get the derivative of the variables which are like zeros and ones and then everything builds up in like in a normal recursive call um of a computation and so if you look at this run comparisons demo, I'm just showing you what I'm executing now. This is this. Then what happens here is I set up X and Y. I compute P with the polynomial. The polynomial knows how to, how, you know, it's defined with infix notation plus and, and uh, multiplication. It um, gives me a set expression, which is composed of a bunch of plus and multiplication expressions, which know of each other, know the, the, the plus, uh, you know, if I write, if I write down uh, a plus b times c for uh, e, then e is an expression, is a multiplication expression with left entry a plus b and right uh, entry c, where the left entry is really a plus expression, right? This is how it works. It's like this this tree is formed just by defining uh, this this expression, and um, if then I call uh, the command to compute the derivative, the d value of e, then as we've seen, it, it uh, 
computes the, it, it wants to uh, query the d values of the sub expressions and then it composes the values in some form and so if i call the um, derivative request to compute this of z then i can access the derivative and do this recursive call for whatever variable i'm interested in and store it in in, in this expression there uh, in this value there um in you know this is a this is this pair and then uh, i can just ask for hey, what is the value that, I've, that you've computed in the recursive call and how do i get this this thing okay okay and um so finally after you have understood this we are going to look at the reverse accumulation implementation which is similar but a little bit more trickier but in, for bigger matrices at least uh, more effective and here we are also going to have a variable uh, class of which we instantiate here this is a different um, implementation than above but we also can call this p then uh, what happens there is I do a call an eval function which will do both a forward and a, and a backwards pass forward path of, pass of the values and then back propagation of the derivatives and then I can query again uh, the values and it will be the same result as in the PyTorch as in the forward computations okay so let's have a look at the reverse accumulation implementations so I have a base class which uh, knows how to do the infix plus and multiplication. I have um, this evaluation which I just uh, you know explained. It does a forward pass of the values. We have to implement this forward pass, and then it does a uh, backward pass uh, of the um, the um, derivatives. And this will basically be a, like a chain of of uh, Jacobian terms that are multiplied according to. Um, on the one hand, the chain rule. On the other hand, the product and linearity rule um, that we, you know, need to implement uh, in a second. And we initialize it with one, and all these products are going to um, be added together. And we have to do it in a way that exactly the derivatives end up in the variable class. Okay. Um, so. Um, here is the, the variable reverse accumulation, which is now a little bit more complicated because unlike above, previously in the forward uh, computation, we uh, computed the derivatives on the fly and returned the value of the derivative that we could access. But now um, most of the classes hold more information, right? Because this is how we design this thing. Um, and so uh, if you, uh, the variable, does not only hold a value but it also has the capacity to hold the d value into which we are going to uh, uh, accumulate data um, like basically the sum of everything which is above uh, all this product expression that we define there uh, and we initialize it as zero naturally um, because that's what the, the derivative values will be added to um, okay there's no need for the variable to do a um, uh, forward pass there um, we will access this when we need the things then uh, with the getters here the getters are implemented also trivial and the accumulation is really just hey whatever new value you want me to save in the variable uh, I will just add it to what I, what is already there and then finally um, this will not be needed in the backprop itself but when I um, do the um, gradient descent um, implementation which is an application of this reverse uh, accumulation uh, differentiation algorithm then what I do here is I I have here a convenience function which says hey whatever derivative you have uh, um, you have stored um, do use that to actually move the value around right this if you remember I had I'm sure one two videos where I use gradient descent what you do there is you move uh, the you move around in the plane over which your function is defined according to the gradient basically you try to go to the to the um, to the lowest point and so you use this uh, gradient of some function to actually move the position that you query the function 
And so there's this convenient function which moves the value using uh, the, the derivative value which actually happens to be stored in the same variable. Okay. Um, the plus expression for the reverse accumulation, it has uh, this expression says before, but now we also um, store some value there which will be set during the forward pass. Um, it has some getter, it has a forward pass which just implements the addition. And then it has the, um, which I call here accumulative, accumulate uh, derivative. You could also call it, you know, backward or, or push down the derivative or derivative value, whatever. And the point is here that for every function that you implement, in this case, we have just plus and multiplication, but you could also have um, unary functions like a sigmoid is used in machine learning a lot. You have to um, uh, basically apply um, the, you, you know, think about what the function does, compute the chain rule, and then see what is the part that I have to carry along to actually end up uh, at the bottom with the correct things. So this is basically here thinking about what values need to be carried along at each step um, as you uh, go down and pass things even further into the expression at the lower level. And in this case, um, due to linearity, the, there's like each each of the left and right uh, uh, expressions can be treated uh, again separately and you just uh, carry on um, with uh, all the, the values that you get here so this is like basically there's not much to be done and I note that here we do not have now to add um, the derivative values up because we are not adding them here at this stage we're just passing all, everything that we have down and everything will be uh, like added or cu accumulated with the plus sign in the in the variable here so this this plus is basically responsible then um, to pick up whatever is pushed down from wherever okay so the to um, you know you could do a pen and paper proof that this algorithm then actually like um, ends up holding all the terms and that you not miss any or, or over count anything but this is like the, the smartness of this algorithm right that you have the simple expressions basically simplified expressions and that uh, data propagates down and in this video this is not a proof uh, that it works but you can you know you can look at the some some uh, some uh, pen and paper um, uh, validation of the, the uh, all the uh, derivatives are counted for um, and uh, finally there's the multiplication expression again looks exactly the same the multiplication the forward pass now uses multiplication not addition obviously and in the um, in the pushback of the derivative you now have the uh, crossover term so that the the left uh, push down uh, gets some data from the right push down and this corresponds to the fact that if you do the product rule then you have you know the value of the one thing times the derivative of the other thing uh, for the left term and on the right term the, the exact same, same way around so the, the L left expression gets something from the right expression and this is exactly what you collect as you push down okay uh, so this is the implementation of this reverse accumulation algorithm there's uh, there's basically not uh, much more to it. We could, of course, add more functions to uh, compose more complicated objects, not just polynomials. Um, and then we would have to implement an expression with the uh, correct derivative. And the sigmoid, if you remember, it has a particularly simple derivative rule where you, you know, the, it has this exponential function one over something something. And if you take the derivative, then it's just the sum of products of another, other sigmoids. And that's why it's also nice from from an implementation standpoint um, and uh, and has also value in the neural networks. <coughs> okay, um, and lastly, I will just demonstrate to you that the um, algorithm also works with this very simple gradient descent implementation. So um, let me uh, go here. So this is, the, this is a um, implementation where I actually use this reverse accumulation variables. I say I want to do 5,000 iterations. There's a certain epsilon just to validate. There's a step size mu that I will use with the step that you saw before. I initialize it at some point. It doesn't really matter. I chose minus three, minus five. You know, this is some point here. Um, 
I am here somewhere, right? And then it will uh, look at the um, the value of the function and the derivative, and you will see, oh, the gradient goes like this, go one step in this direction, and then it will slowly move or fastly move towards the minimum of the function. This is just a gradient descent. Um, and find the minimum, which uh, we have seen should be minus... Uh, minus three over a uh, four over three, and so um, again, it, do the iterations, set up the variables, compute the value forward backward, and then do the step, change the x and y's, read out all the values, and then in the next iteration they will be. Uh, in this case, I actually reinstantiate new variables um, and with the same value. I could also like do this in one, but um, okay, so be it. So I run this and uh, here I have a log. This is designed so that it doesn't spam me. Um, and I see I start somewhere like apparently on the first step or something it has uh, at the value x equals minus three, y equals minus five has the value 33. And then it, in, in various steps, moves towards the center and then it even passes the zero because the zero is, the minimum is actually not at zero, but is at this value minus three over, uh, four over three. And you see things actually work. Okay, so um, I was relatively fast. You saw the whole implementation. You, you can play around with it. That's at the bottom in the GitHub. I hoped you got uh, something out of it. And with that, I wish you a pleasant night. <laughs> Good night.